So, oh, some more people are joining. Okay, so it's it's this. This is how Lincoln played. This is everything. There isn't anything else. And even this isn't something that exists, that is an experience for someone. That's basically the dream that what happens is an experience for a me. And this me, so to speak, is the only dream. There is no other dream. Everything else is what seems to be happening. Everything else is the real and unreal natural reality. And of course, the impression to be an I is also the real and unreal natural reality. So that's what seems to be happening. People assuming themselves to be someone and automatically to kind of suffer from that. Suffer is a strong word. It's not necessarily a conscious suffering, but the subtle impression that there has to be more, there has to be something else in life or what life is for is happening for, but that's part of that illusion. So all ideas about becoming, all ideas about finding more, something deeper, all ideas about accepting what is, or all attempts to make this personal experience be okay with itself are part of that illusion. It just goes together. To be, to be someone, to feel separate, to seek, to hope there is more. And liberation, as we would discuss it here, kind of, would just be the collapse of that illusion. It would be the turning out that there isn't anyone in the first place. And that all techniques, all practices, all doing, so to speak, um, only belong to that illusion. And that this sense of wrongness or this illusion that this isn't whole and complete isn't based on any truth or reality, it just belongs to that illusion. Nothing is missing. There isn't another reality which will be more fulfilling or more perfect or greater than what seems to be happening. All there is is what seems to be happening and it's naturally whole and complete. It's not uh, exciting. It's not an experience of excitement. It's very natural. What we talk about here is very natural. This being whole and complete. Um, without anyone arriving in it. So this being whole and complete isn't kind of a fixed reality. It's not stiff or stable or... No, it's pretty wild. It's apparently changing all the time what seems to be happening without really going anywhere. It's not changing and moving on to something else. It's never becoming anything that's real, but it's also not a stiff and boring something, wholeness. So it's this. That's it. <clears throat> It's a surprise. The person never, never expects this to be what it dreams about. Hi, Andreas. Hello. I want to share something. So you might remember one of the mornings in Moorhearts, we were just having a chat for about half an hour, 40 minutes, whatever, before the meeting. <laughs> and I was saying that I was desperate for my old lifestyle back and all of that. And you said that when you had your phase with what you were doing, when that collapsed, you were mourning for it back for a long time. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was basically the the partying period. Yeah. Oh, yeah, was, of course. Yeah. It was gorgeous. It was a brilliant time. And when it ended, I was sad and mourning it for years. Yeah. Desperately you, trying to replace it with some sober spirituality. And you were saying, you know, that you will never have that much fun again and those emotions and that much happiness again. Absolutely. But what I wanted to say was, I think it only dawned on me yesterday or today. I don't think I miss it anymore, my old lifestyle. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I don't miss it too, because it wasn't only fun and all those things. It was a trip. It was quite, quite exhausting as well, and it needed a lot of work. The, the narrative that I lived in and all this, those things. Oh, so, yeah, I don't miss it at all anymore. No, but I was mourning to go back. I was, I was just thinking, as soon as this non-duality stuff's over and I've lost the me, I'm straight back to that lifestyle again. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like, because I'd always say to Jim, like, oh, I can't, I want to go back, I want to go back to that. And he'd say, well, you can't. But now I just think what, I mean, when I remember it and think about it, it was incredible. Like, it was unbelievable. But what is there to go back to at the Absolutely. same time? There's nothing appealing. In the end, there's nothing appealing about anything. I'm not at that level yet. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just setting new, new goals for you, William. Okay, I'll work hard. You're fatigued, <laughs> not mourning the past anymore. So no. <laughs> I've got further work. what i also wanted to say i just thought because obviously you said you'll never have those highs again and those good emotions again when you were in your partying phase and i don't think i will ever have the highs again that i had when i was doing what i was doing but in a way it feels to sorry what were you going to say yeah well i'm not sure if i won't have this in the the emotions again because i can uh, this body i can feel very happy at times but it wouldn't go together with that narrative. And it was a quite adventurous and great narrative that on top caused a lot of those highs. Let's put it like this. They don't happen anymore. Yeah, that's it. It's always adding the narrative. Because what I was going to say is the highs that I had, it was always, in, well, looking back, not at the time, but looking back at it now, it was almost like artificially created a lot of it in a way. You're that... all of them. Oh, yeah, well, of course. In a way, all of them. Yeah, because like you said, you've got to add the narrative to what's happening to you. Like, this is epic. This is epic. Tomorrow night's going to be exactly, more exactly. epic. That's almost like talking oneself into, into a, a flesh. I think that's yeah. the English word. Getting hyped, getting hyped up. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, this has nothing to do, in a way, with the joyful feelings that happened anyway, or that the body can feel. Yeah. There's not even a need for that additional or artificial layer. Uh, oh it's so epic it's so awesome the next oh. one's going to be even more epic or whatever because it's just complete you've said before i think when you add that narrative it almost makes it like it's not complete that you have to add that oh totally oh that is that is the person's method to make it complete for itself because the joy of what happened or the joy of the joyful things we did that wasn't enough so the person, the person's method was to create this this narrative to make itself feel good about it. Oh, totally. Yeah. And that's purely artificial. I mean, usually then soon afterwards it goes the other way around. So it's the highs and the lows, and they are no one's doing it really, but in the end they are self-created. Constant, of, of course. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. For the person, it's never just only great or sad or whatever. The person's joy comes from knowing how great it is. But it has to talk itself into it. 
or from knowing how bad it is. The person just can't walk around feeling miserable. It needs to know about it and tell itself a story about it. That's its method to be occupied. So if it feels miserable and it tells itself a story and knows about it, is that because it feels like it's doing something to solve it in its dream? Yeah, it feels separate from it and it has to find an answer to it. Kind of, it's very simplified, you know, and all of that would just be what seems to be happening. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it constantly just has to do something with itself because it, it feels uh, always too much. I'm too much. Whatever happens, I'm 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 there too, and I have to do something with me, no matter what happens in the end. I mean, there can still be great fun and great laughter and joy and stuff. But it wouldn't create this impression of a high, one could say. It's not the feelings that create a high. It's the person that gets high on those things. Or low. Feelings are very neutral in that sense. Even if they seem to be intense or full on. That's not, that's not a high or a low. Not that it matters. I don't say, I, I don't suggest that it's better without those things. Not teaching to not be that, but that would just be what seems to be happening when there is the illusion of me or when it collapsed. Well, there's no better or worse in terms of more or less fulfilling. So this wasn't a suggestion. just in case anyone thought so. <laughs> because as I said, it, it was even kind of gorgeous back then, so. <laughs>
Hi, Andreas. Hello. And what's happening without a framework or without me to define what's happening uh, seems like it would be even hard to refer to what's happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there is not. Oh, yeah, there's no one referring to what happens. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, but basically because, not because there is someone who is ultimately separate, but because all there is is what, what happens. I mean, who, who would refer to what, so to speak? Well, I was just thinking in terms of trying to define, even define what's happening. That's typical, that's just comes from the person okay. defining what happens. And if you say that all there is is what happens without a definition, then it's has no, uh, it doesn't have any frame or there's no uh, outer edges to it. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so I'm never, there's nothing in here trying to define what happens mm -hmm. and know it, so to speak. I mean, that's the hope that one can kind of know what happens or at least come very close to the truth and rest in this. And this really, <laughs> really doesn't happen here though the brain might produce stories and stories about about what uh, what seems to be happening but there's never the attempt in it to find the truth or something okay absolutely and there's no definition no trying to define it neither in a in a practical way you know like wanting to know what's going on in but also not in this spiritual way right. so if i talk about what's going on in my life that's what's happening for me and and i can say that all there is is that you know all there is is what that pairs what that seems to be as far as i can see but but it's when you when you remove that those that framework then it just seems uh like i said you can't even refer to it yeah exactly there is <laughs> there's nothing left right uh, there's nothing to hold on to nothing to refer to no landing point i right. mean referring to is kind of to be safe to feel safe as me if you mm. have a reference point Right. basically referring to is yeah yeah grabbing holding on to mm, yeah, it's, it's done from a position of it's done from a position which is which there is with no me there's no position so i guess that's the yeah it's hard to imagine yeah well impossible to imagine yeah, yeah, probably. yeah. that's more accurate yeah I'm so, <laughs> sorry <laughs> thank you thank you So uh, there's no idea here about what this is. And not only no idea, there's no experience here of anything. But I really have no idea what, what, what this is. In this moment and generally, in terms of I know actually it's all wholeness or something, yeah, what, what would that mean? But there's also no knowledge about what sitting in front of a screen is and what this is about and stuff like that. I mean, no one has, to be honest. I'm not, it's not only me who has no idea. <laughs> yeah.
I have a question about this um, being in the body. Mm -hmm. um, you sometimes say like um, there is nobody in there. Yes. And uh, th this is like the same for me. Like um, I, I cannot, I could not say where I am. Like yes. I cannot, um, yeah. But how, um, how is it for you in, mm -hmm. in brackets? Like, how are you feel, um, feeling your body? Like, for example, if somewhere is a pain, mm -hmm. I suppose there is a pain. Yeah. But if there is no pain, nothing special, the body is just normal. Is there the feeling of the body or is it like not not existent in that yeah moment. that's i can't i can't explain that i really can't explain how it is to be a living body without being in it and experiencing it so it, i can't answer that question <laughs> in the end because i'm not there and the answer doesn't make sense at all so there is not not a feeling of a body, <laughs> but there's also not someone experiencing a body. I can't, I, I can't tell you how it is right now. Yeah. This feels itself. With, I mean, yeah. But, yeah. Like it, it, the me illusion is active here, but at the same time, I would say like I am not in there because I don't know what that is. What is I? Yeah. Like exactly. it is not the heart, it's not the brain, it's not a special point where I feel there I am. Yeah. If if I look what is there is only yeah, but feelings but, and sensations, and sometimes they are there, sometimes not. Yeah, but so, you are still looking. That's the thing. Yeah, you are still mm. looking. Something yeah. inside seems to inquire. Yes, and, and this something probably would say, "I'm in the body," but you know, not really okay. consciously. But that's yeah, Be because I would not say it mm -hmm. because I. I had always the problem when somebody says it that I think, what does it mean? What are they talking like? About? I can, yeah. And yes, it's true. I'm I'm looking. I'm like um, like a research, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I don't know who or what I am or where I am. Absolutely, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, what would be what would be the question about this? Yeah, how it is there? Oh, I've no idea. I can't tell you. I don't know. There is no one. There is no one. There's no one looking. Even there's this isn't happening. What you describe doesn't seem to be happening here. Let's put it mm. like this. There's just what is. At any moment. Uh, yes, but for no one. So mm. without anyone knowing this and without it being kind of special or something. But yeah, there's just what seems to be happening. There's just how it is in every moment, so to speak. But not for anyone. And after the, the illusion disappeared, um there was more like it's how to say like more more body feeling or less or you cannot also you cannot say i can't really say but if i would have to go into a story i would say more hmm more because there was no escape in stories and into this abstract world of the person so what was left or what is left is the natural functioning of a body that's alive 
So instead of hanging out in my head all the time, thinking about how great it will be when I'm when I'm fulfilled, <laughs> there's just what seems to be happening. Mm. Yeah. And then that's total. But it's hard to say because it's not really that the focus suddenly is in the body or something. There's just less need to escape. Mm. And it's just very direct and immediate, this being alive. But it's just what seems to be happening because there are also moments, I guess, where the body doesn't feel itself. Mm. something well whatever so it's not something that's continuously going on it would just be what seems to be happening thank you thank you and yes i got it in the chat it's totally immediate and direct without intermediary yes exactly but that's impossible to describe. Of course, the person has so different ideas about this not being real or this not being something. But that's indescribable how it is to totally be what happens without having an experience of it to be real. Hi, Andreas. Hello. I'm just sharing this. Like, I feel just terrified just sitting here and doing nothing. That's probably why I'm talking to you. Hmm. But I've noticed that more and more recently from over the last couple of weeks. There's a lot less distraction going on than before. And there's periods of just sitting there doing nothing. And it's like so much terror in the body. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm just yeah, maybe it's not terror. Maybe it's just what seem. Maybe it's just feelings that seem to be happening. Maybe terror is one of those stories that you attach to it. But I mean, it feels very um, painful. But it feels painful in a, a way like I need to be occupied or some or I'm going to die. It really feels like if I'm not occupied, I'll die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, I guess. I don't know, like, I can't really, not that I need to, but it's like the idea of what to use as a distraction, I can't, do you know what I mean? It used to be a lot easier to come up with an idea. <laughs> right, yeah, well. <laughs> now it's just like, oh, fuck, no, here we go again. <laughs> well, well, that's all right. That's it. That's what seems to be happening. And that's do you know what I will say? Sorry, even I'm trying to avoid this feeling of terror, it is a lot more alive than being distracted. Oh, totally. Oh, of course. Not in a better and worse comparison, but being distracted all the time is kind of like being numb. And it might feel really good and pleasant and nice, but... This oh, it has nothing to do with the aliveness and the totality that we talk about, really. Of course. No, this feeling that I call terror, and you said it might not be terror. Well, I think, whatever. But anyway, it's horrible and painful, but it is quite alive. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, you, it's a problem. You can't you can't make it good, but yeah, it's totally. I think that's what happens when the me basically like tries to suppress the feelings it doesn't want to feel. It cuts off the aliveness in a way. Well, yeah, of course. Oh yeah, of course. By saying no to stuff all the time, but even yeah, by it saying tries to control the wholeness, and that's a bit weird. Yeah, even by saying yes to the things it likes is a bit like cutting off the aliveness yeah do you know by me being aware and processing and saying yes to it or that it, it, it i don't know in some way it kind of just doesn't yeah it, yeah, it, it diminishes sure. it in some way yeah yes yeah yeah well only apparently all of it of course Is in a way it's the same aliveness but as the attempt to kill aliveness. 
and to control it and to make it digestible and bearable and stuff like that. <laughs> instead of okay. just, instead of just dying to the terror of being <laughs> being a human body <laughs> the thing is andreas so like you know how like the me has this acceptable range of feelings yeah and you've talked about it doesn't want too little feelings can't be boring it doesn't want too much feelings can be too intense and it has this kind of you said i think acceptable range acceptable range where where it can be without too much stress so the question danger of being killed, of boredom and emptiness, or of aliveness and totality. So do you no longer have, an, not that there's a you, but let's just, I'm going to word it like this. Do you not have any acceptable range? No. <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> so you don't. That's so, it. Oh. <laughs> No, no, there's never this, okay, it's still good. I can still be with that. That would be the acceptable range. The person says, it's still okay, yeah. I can still be with that without the fear of dying from it. And that's completely illusory. I mean, we talked about it. If it's too intense for the body, the body just gets unconscious. Everything else is just... It's never too much in that sense. Everything else just is what seems to be happening and totally capable of being processed, so to speak. But it's not coming from a position. It's not coming from the position of a relaxed observer or something. So it's not that there is someone here who managed to accept it all or just widened its range of acceptance in terms of now everything is accepted. This question doesn't even come up. There's just what seems to be happening. And there's no question anymore about it being acceptable for me or not. Also how this body reacts or something. You know, it's not me being cool with what happens. There's just no one there living in this division of acceptable, not acceptable. Yeah, well, it's, as I said, it's never too much. What would too much mean? That's the thing. What, what, what would that be if, if a feeling is really too much? How would that look like? What would, what would actually happen if it a would lot, be too much? I don't know how to answer you, but a lot of my feelings feel like they're too much. Yeah, they seem too much. Maybe just because they are occupying your whole system, and you think you should actually feel something else or something. Yeah, but there's nothing better than feeling yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, it's a surprise and it's not logical. It can't be explained. But... Yeah. Hi, Andrea. Hello. <clears throat> so there's no way to experience non-separation. It's like there's no way to experience that I'm not here. It's like that the experience can only be me. Exactly. Absolutely. 
in my in my spiritual circle, sometimes I hear people say, "Oh, I'm in union with the universe or whatever." Right? I'm in yeah. union, but when even to know a... that they're in union, they can't be yeah. in union. Absolutely, exactly. Usually, they're saying it either as a concept or when they're having a good time. Yeah, they're having a good yeah. time. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I was in union with God. I had green traffic lights for two, <laughs> 20 minutes or something. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, there's nothing to hold on to. It's like right now, at least, there's like even trying to hold on to the fact that there's nothing to hold on to is like impossible. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, I Who don't would know. know that? It, Who would? What yeah. would that mean? Seems like things are things are happening here today for some unknown reason. Mm, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. What happens, or what seems to be happening? already is the incomprehensible natural reality that's not holding on to anything that's never living within a narrative or within a greater reality it basically does what it wants and it doesn't care about any kind of concept or idea about life so hmm. this doesn't fit any concept not even the non-dual concept or the person thinks about what non-duality, how that would be. Because usually in the person's concepts about non-duality, this wouldn't be allowed to happen. But it's this. This is the non-dual, incomprehensible natural reality. It's this. <laughs> right so i will never know that if i'm not here i'll never have that knowledge of that i i can't i can't i can't know that i'm not here like what that's crazy. That's impossible. Well, it's and, like, how could that ever happen? And it's already the case. That's the good news. You already don't know. <laughs> yeah. No answer, no solution.
Hello, Andreas. Hello. Hi. Um, so this just sitting here and uh, um, hearing and speaking is full and complete, but just the person or the eye or the consciousness think that couldn't be. This is not enough. This is exactly. nothing. This is boring. This is exactly not full. Yeah. Yes, and it's more like a, a feeling. It's not even these ideas of it's boring or whatever. They are actually a symptom. But it, it's just how it feels like something feel, seen from the me. There's this feeling of mm, mm, but as if something isn't right. Yes. And that it's my responsibility to make it right for me. So uh, this is uh, imagination that it must be different from that who is now? Or... Yeah, one could say so. It, it's an imagination, but it also seems to be so uncomfortable. Mm. You know, as a, just as a feeling, it's not even yes. thought through. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, really un that's really unpleasant to be a me. You're, no, it's more subtle in a way. It's mm. the, just this, yeah, okay. What to do? Or what shall we do? Or, Yet, what to do? And there's no way out. And there's no way out at all. No, no. If that's what happens, that's what happens. Including the sensation that something is missing. Mm. That that's the person's problem so to speak that it can't make this go away whatever it does do it it can't find an answer to this restlessness or yeah mm. and if that's what seems to be happening that's whole and complete for no one thank you thank you And in a way that's, I mean, the person can't see that or know that, but <clears throat> for the person, this just feels real. There is something needs to be answered, as if there's a real problem, and I really need to find real rest. And it can't comprehend that it's just an energy, that it's just a feeling that it, that it is, itself is that feeling, so to speak. But it just feels real. No, but I have to arrive. Okay, Andreas, I heard you or any other teacher or whatever, another teacher or whatever. Yeah, I heard you. It's all good. But how do I get there? I mean, you have that in all the teachings as well. The teacher says something. I mean, the or every religion has as a concept, at least, the idea that everything is God or that everything is perfect. But the seeker is still left over saying, okay, yeah, 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 okay, I know that, but how can I feel it? And of course, the same happens with this message, because that's just how the seeker lives. Yeah, Andreas, I've heard there is no one. I understand. I understand the me can never find. But how can this become my reality? And, and there's no answer to it. Hi, Hello. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>, no, <see. laughs> uh, uh, you would you would still say that that, that you have some uh, that, that the apparent Andreas has moods. 
Mood, uh, I think uh, mood feeling. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. once you, you told us about being angry that there was a, I don't know, a car hunting outside the window. Yeah, cars provoke me, kind of. Yeah. It's not so the cars, are, it's actually yeah. the people driving the cars. Yeah. Yeah, I see, also the highway. But, uh, <laughs> so you would say that, that um, there's a, yeah, an apparent surface where still this ripples, the water is kind of, can be stirred. And it was not always the same, but, but on, on it, somehow like, like on deep water, there's the silence and then there's still some turbulence sometimes in the, like the body has moved. Well, in a way, I would say all there is is the surface, and that surface is total. So there's just no deeper reality to it that can be still or be moved. I think that's the person kind of adding itself to the surface or to what seems to be happening and say, oh, this touches me, this provokes me as a me, and there are other things where I can stay calm. And uh, this level of reality is illusory. So it's not that the body gets angry and then returns to normal in terms of an experience. No, all of it just is normal or all of it is natural. So it's not that there is a, a, a hidden layer of calmness or something. But you also say that something relaxed over time and me was fading out, there was kind of more calmness or more balance. That's, yeah. that's true, but that's what seems to be happening only. So if there would be anger all the time, that would be what seems to be happening. It doesn't create this, this experience of calmness. It's, it's an empty calming but it's not someone who becomes calmer as an experience of me. It's I can't understand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the me would always re- live in relationship with what happens. And then, of course, if the body is calmer, it would also feel calmer. At least that's the idea the person lives in. Well, no, it would just be what seems to be happening. It reminds me of Yuji Krishnamurti, you know, Yuji. I, I, when I watch his videos, I always feel like there is some kind of layer, always a little bit angry, always. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite possible. I mean, why not? Or at least enthusiastic or energetic. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, when I say karma, this, this, this becomes karma. I don't mean it in a spiritual way that I walk slower and talk, uh, talk slower. And, uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm, well, other people might think differently, but I walk quite fast, at least if I want to go somewhere. And I often have a lot of tasks during the day, and not tasks, you know, things I want to do. And I'm, I'm just, it's just, I can't explain it, explain it because it's not the, the spiritual calmness. Well, it, yeah. So liberation, it just maybe this liberation has nothing to do with any kind of, becoming a calm or a silent state or something. And there's a comment in the chat. There is a calmness to whatever happens. Yeah, calmness. Well, everything is totally in peace. There isn't, of course, nothing is, nothing is something. Yeah. So everything is in total harmony with itself. In a way, maybe that one could call calmness. Natural, nothing is outside, exaggerating. Hmm. 
I think it's a bit like what, what William talked about, this variable range of things. That's also the me might say, I can still be calm with that. I can still be not too touched by this and everything that would go beyond that. I would need to react on it quickly to control it. Of course, when that's not there, there is no artificial doing. Maybe that would be an idea why some scriptures, or I have no idea, but why some people might regard this to silence or calmness, because there isn't this illusion of a loud voice commenting and this constant attempt to, I have to do something about that. I'm sad. I have to do something about this. Oh, I always get angry about other drivers. I have to do something about them. This is, this stuff is just, and the rest is in total harmony with itself, simply by being itself. So there is no one who is um, who has the impression to be moving between states. Now it's like this. Oh, now it's like this. Now it's like this. Andreas. Hello. Yeah, I was just wondering, <clears throat> do you see knowing and experiencing as being the same? Uh, yes, yeah. Exactly, in a way, and knowing is a bit superficial, experiencing. Knowing comes out of experiencing, so to speak, or in order to know something, you first have to experience it. Well, if we go back to the, somebody asked about or mentioned a chair before seeing a chair and knowing there's a chair, but, but the chair doesn't know the chair is a chair. Exactly. And so when that sense of knowing or experiencing drops, there's no knowing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that, that's what we talk about, that the natural reality is like being a chair or well, being anything else. I mean, yeah. And, and what this message points out apparently is that everything already is like that. Even the illusion to experience oneself is like the chair. It's completely inexperienced. 
It's just what seems to be happening. Yeah. That's how much we can say about the natural reality. It's like you can also ask a chair. How is it for you? Tell me the truth. How is it to be that chair? What's the answer to you being a chair? Why are you at all? What's your purpose? Where do you come from? And besides that, what do you suggest to me? How should I, what should I do? What would you suggest? How can I become enlightened? That's what we are doing here, basically. And that's the seeker's natural reality. It's constantly facing, apparently, this empty reality. And itself is that empty reality. So even if it faces itself, what some people do, uh, try to put their attention back onto themselves or inquire into who they are, again, they are, they are facing this empty nothingness. There was, there's no before being a chair, there's no being a chair, there's no after being a chair. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> or the person can come up with say, okay, well, at least I can sit, <laughs> I can sit on you until I find the answer. <laughs> at least I can use you. Mm. Yes. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. I'm going to recommend the chair method to my clients. <laughs> yeah, I just was picturing very desperate seekers ending up uh, destroying the yes. chair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Setting it on fire. <laughs> Give right. me the fucking answer. Why am I here? Oh. God, that's perfect. <laughs> Oh man, I can I can actually see someone taking an idea and re recommending it to their followers to actually sit with the chair and tell the ch yeah they are called spiritual teachers yeah just yeah I think uh, yeah I think Zen is not too far away from that <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, seems to be some sitting going on, but I'm not sure. 
Mm. And staring at a blank wall. Yeah, sitting just staring at a blank wall. Yeah. I've been reported, but I've no idea, of course. Oh, I've done it. Yeah, they oh. stare at a blank wall. Yeah. Mm. Well, <laughs> that phase didn't last too long with me because I was like, fuck this blank wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, lo I love the chair thing, though. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Andreas, hi, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Um, maybe this is weird, but uh, what what seem, I seem to be noticing here is like, um, uh, say, walking into my house that I've lived in for the last, you know, almost 20 years, but noticing that there's a different feeling than like when I left and I left like five minutes ago. And it's like a totally different thing. And um, it's happening, seems to be happening everywhere. Like, let's say a bar that I've been, I go to all the time and totally different feelings there than it was the previous time, which I don't know why oh, yeah. there's a noticing of that. It's so weird. Oh, no. Well, no, you've never been anywhere. So you've never <laughs> been in that house. Uh, it's just what seems to be happening. If everything is new. Nothing is old and boring and known. Oh, yeah. makes total sense. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There never was a previous life. There never were Zoom meetings before. Then it's never have been a home. There's no one ever arriving in the knowledge of how it is, how it really is. Andreas, uh, one more question, if I may. Um, yeah. Uh, it seems like also a lot of things have been gradually dropping off, right? And I don't notice it right off the bat, but I notice like if a situation comes up. Yeah. So like I used to be such an angry bird, like crazy, you know, and now it not only doesn't even matter, but it doesn't like even, I don't know if I'm saying it right, like it doesn't register, like something will, like I guess will try to provoke me. And it completely switches off and switches the topic and the other party gets baited and completely goes off the tangent and doesn't even want to argue anymore. Mm, that's nice. Which is, yeah, it's really yeah. nice. Actually. <laughs> Getting angry is so much work. Well, that's true. Yeah. Someone right? gets angry. That's really hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember it used to take so much out of like, it's so heavy, you know, and it's, um, it just the only thing that's here is like now it gets annoyed and I'm like okay I'm just gonna leave <laughs> not for me <laughs> exactly yeah there's no no need to indulge into any kind of story about getting angry and why it's okay to get angry and I'm right and what, oh. what, what seems to be happening when people get angry yeah yeah and yeah. then um, 
I wanted to ask also, um, when you speak about freedom, right, the apparent freedom that we all think that we have, it's really not freedom because it's a freedom for someone. No, is absolutely. That, and it's yeah. completely dreamt. There is no one who's free, really. Right. Yeah, because even intellectually, when sometimes, it, you know, I'll think about it, I'm like, well, if it, there, there is no one, then I guess that would be the ultimate freedom because then there's no other either. Yeah, well, that, that is the natural freedom that we talk about. But no one has that. Or it's not, yeah. No one owns that freedom. Yeah. Everything's already free from the bondage of being someone or from the right. prison of the illusion of free will and choice. But yeah. Yeah. Because that freedom that the person dreams about, I can do whatever I want, uh, that doesn't exist. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. It's not um, needed, and it's not needed, of course. Yeah. And then um, I also wanted to, um, earlier on before hearing this communication, I kind of always thought that, you know, enlightenment or whatever it would be, just. Um, I guess I, I kind of wanted it because I felt like it would be the solution to my problems, right? It would make me feel better and I would be like, in, not even in constant something, but just something that would be better than what's happening. <laughs> and, you know, because I mean, and when this communication was heard, I'm like, wow, I was like, that's so, it's such a selfish motive that you think that the only reason why I would ever want that is because I want to feel good all the time. Absolutely. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's purely it's purely personal and in that sense selfish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing, nothing holy or about the I mean there's yeah. nothing holy about anything, but that includes this. Yeah. And um, you know, as we uh I always thought like I wasn't like afraid, I wasn't afraid of uh, death and there was no fear, I guess as I understand it. But when we had the earthquake here in New York on Friday, oh my God, I got so scared. I, I mean, just, oh, yeah, but oh my God. That seems quite natural to me. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like, a, you know, it was just, it was funny because this, the, the body started doing like a hand movement as if like trying to hold the air together, as if I was like holding the building. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, no, probably Ray. can't one probably can't really feel safe in an earthquake i've never been in one but <laughs> yeah a big one, but. it was only 10 seconds but it was it was because i live right on the water in uh new york and brooklyn and it was and the building is a high rise and that was pretty mm. <laughs> legit <laughs> wow. wow okay well thank you so much thank you thanks <laughs> So, yeah, there is no answer. There is no answer to life. There is no answer to the person's question, to the seeker's questions of, well, you know, who am I? Why am I here? What's this about? How can I become fulfilled? There's no answer to that. So all there is is what seems to be happening, and there's nothing outside of it. There is no seeker. There is no me that's separate from what happens. Who could have questions about it? What seems to be happening is undivided and it's naturally free and wild and perfect, but just this, it's, it's just what seems to be happening. It doesn't have choice, but it's free. So that's all there is. That's the natural reality. Uh, thanks a lot for joining and I wish you a lovely time. Nice to see you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Nice to see you. Thank you. Bye.